If you want to know how to effectively use your army in the beginning of a campaign, look no further. So this video is not just going to be a normal this is how you crump some orcs with dwarves video. What I'm trying to get across in this video is how to maximize your army's effectiveness and take minimal casualties. When you're playing a campaign this is really important because what you're aiming to do is reduce the amount of casualties you take each turn so that your army doesn't have to waste time in replenishing its casualties. This is turn two on the dwarf campaign. I'm using Thorgrim and Grudge Bear. The settings for both are hard. Um, so hard campaign, hard battle difficulty. I've waited one turn and recruited three extra units of dwarf warriors. And this is one of the very simple way you can turn battles to your advantage. Is make sure you outnumber your enemy. Or at least, you know, you're not outnumbered by your enemy. Let's go ahead and fight it and see how this one goes. Just a quick glance over the battle line shows how useful it is to spend the first turn picking up three extra units of Dwarf Warriors. Clearly outclassed, but nothing surprising in the battle line. Um, we have missile troops in the centre, pr protected by units. What I have done though, is stack one of the flanks with much better troops than the other. You've got hammers over here, miners over here. The reason being is I'm going to pin their battle line in the centre, and then flank them with troops. Again, nothing surprising in and of itself, but what I am starting to do by doing this is you'll turn one flank and start to break it. Then these units, now that they're freed up, will start to roll down the line. The missile troops will continue to pepper everything that free flees, and you've got yourself a victory. By making sure that you flank units as well, what you're doing is you're, again, minimizing the casualties you're going to take. Now the grudge throwers initially will try and hit their melee troops. They actually did target the arrow boys, but it's only because the rocks are really good at flying over the top of the unit that you've targeted. Hit the melee troops in the beginning. You're going to have all the work, time in the world to hit the uh, missile troops after your lines have engaged. But you can see here, their lord's got ahead. Thorgrim's going to engage him. My battle line's going to pin his in place. And Thorgrim is going to pop his ability that reduces the melee um, defense of a unit, which, as you can see, Nashrak's morale starts to drop rapidly. The flanks are now moving around. All that the miners are trying to do really with the dwarves is a fair amount of damage on the orc boys, but actually reduce the amount of damage that this unit takes by giving them more than one unit to deal with. And now the hammers are coming in against the biggins. To deal with them with some damage there. Now unsurprisingly Nashrak's just broken. No great shakes there. And what I'll try doing now is targeting with, with some missile troops once he's clear of the line. But you can see those green bars don't really reflect what's going on in combat because it's not like they've taken that percent of casualties. It seems to have something to do with combat effectiveness as well. But the hammers were kept nicely out of the range of their missile troops. Battle's over and what I try to do here now to assist myself later on and continue that theme of reducing casualties is I play this bit out. Even if you do it at three times the speed continue to target enemy units and run them down as much as you can especially in a scenario like this where the army isn't part of a garrison it's going to basically move away from mine but still be an army on the map and therefore can still be replenished and recruit more units if it's against a garrison doesn't matter you'll just destroy whatever's in that city anyway it's fine Now I hope that's been helpful to you. Those uh, units of Piggins are about to be destroyed. Nashrak dies in the next battle, as does the entire garrison. Unsurprisingly, not a bad victory at all, actually. Only 40 losses. You can see what I'm saying about combat effectiveness versus health. Uh, nowhere near where they were before. They haven't actually lost that many guys at all. Um, and although we didn't wipe anything out, I mean, there's hardly anything left here. So we've maximised what our army can do. It's only going to take, after a couple more battles this turn, really one turn 
in a newly captured settlement to replenish all those losses uh, and we're good to go. It's been really fun showing you this. Hopefully it's been uh, some help. If you haven't already had a look at the Dwarf Starter Guide video, links should be appearing on your screen now. It's in the description as well. Uh, it gives some really good tips, not just for Thorgrim, but for Grombindle and Angrim as well. But uh, happy with that battle. We're not going to get a lot of loot. Yeah, 91. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but a rank game for Thorgrim, which is a bonus. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed. Keep drinking, keep gaming, and as always, stay safe.